Manure. Urine. Sweat. Blood. The first life-giving breath the baby took. And then the smell of his mother's skin. This is an adaptation of a poem from a spiritual director for a company called Lead. I thought it was interesting. An interesting way to start the sermon for this evening. This is a story, you see, that we think we all know, right? We know this story. We've heard it countless times. It's one that we have sets up around our house, probably. You probably have a manger out, right? We have a manger here. We think we know the story because we've heard it over and over and over again. But do we actually know the story? You see, this evening's story is 20 verses out of the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. The first five are background information. The next two are the birth. The next... Seven are the angel's message and the final five are what happens with how the shepherds respond to that angel's message. But if we really know this story, my question is, and this group of people is not allowed to answer, except for the one in the back, in the middle, who wasn't here at the earlier service. Who are the characters in the story? You're not allowed to answer either. Who are the characters in the story? Who? Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. No. Shepherds. Shepherds. Shepherds, yes. The homeless shepherds in the field, right? There's homeless shepherds. Who else? Who are the characters in the story? You're not allowed to answer. You were here. You know the answers. You were here. You know the answers. Mary and Joseph. Joseph. There you go. (laughs) Mary and Joseph. Who else? No. No. Stop stop telling people the answers. The characters in the story are Mary and Joseph, an engaged pregnant couple. Right? It says in the story that they were engaged and she was about to give birth. So they're engaged and she's pregnant. Homeless shepherds who lived in the fields. Angel and the chorus of angels that joined in. And a newborn baby. That in the verses of the birth announcement, which are... While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. She had her firstborn son, and laid him in the manger. There's no name given for the baby at all at this point in the second chapter. Of the Gospel of Luke. It's a pretty straightforward example of what happened. There was a woman, she was pregnant, and it was time for her to give birth, so she gave birth. But what's not there? There's no snowy night, because if it was a snowy night, there wouldn't be shepherds in the fields. Watching over their flocks. Shepherds were homeless, but they weren't stupid. They wouldn't be outside in the snow. If it was cold, they would find some place to go and seek shelter. So it's not a snowy night. There's no animals overlooking the crib in which the baby was laid. There's not even a stable. It said that the mother, that she had her birth, she wrapped the child in cloth and laid it in the manger. It says nothing about a stable. It also says that there's no innkeeper. It just says there's no room at the end. There's no innkeeper telling them that there's no room there. It's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Mary was in Bethlehem and it was time for her to give birth. So she gave birth to her son. It's a very humble and private event 
It's nothing to write home about. It's nothing that's going to make the 11 o'clock news. It's a simple, straightforward, plain account of a baby born, baby boy being born in very humble surroundings. And then the angels come in. And they go to the shepherds in the fields. And the angels say to the shepherds, do not be afraid. Because it says in the verse right before that, that the shepherds saw the angels and the glory of the Lord shone around them and the glory of the Lord shone around all of the things. And they were terrified. That verse, they were terrified, actually in the Greek is, and they feared a great fear. The author wanted you to understand that these shepherds were so afraid that he used the verb and the noun of the word fear to convey just how afraid these people were. But here's the other thing that we have to look at. Because the word fear also means reverence. So maybe the angels didn't say, stop being afraid. They may have said, stop reverencing me and listen to the message. Because you see, it's not about me or it's not about anything else that's happening around us. What's most important here is the message. What's most important is that you hear what God is trying to tell us. And the message that the initial angel gives to the, to the shepherds, one has been born for you in the city of David today, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. For you in the city of David has been born today, a Savior, Christ the Lord. Remember a little bit ago I said that the baby boy didn't have a name yet at this point. Right here, the angels to these shepherds, these lowly shepherds living out in the field, shepherds, people who couldn't be witnesses in court, shepherds, people who wouldn't be trusted to do anything for anybody else are the ones that see this angel and get the message that The Savior, the Messiah, has been born for us today. You see, this is the message that we truly need to hear. That this baby was born into this world to come and show us how to live. Because these angels say to these shepherds, signify this humble, private event that happened is even more humble when these messengers come from God and give to the lowly of lowlies in the world the name of the new person that was just born. The name of our Savior that's going to come and show us how to live and show us how God loves us. The angels give this message to the shepherds, not to Quirinius and not to Augustus, not to the people that Luke used as name droppers as the beginning of his story tonight, but to the lowly of lowlies, because Jesus came to show us and all of us how to live. That full poem that I started my sermon out with tonight is called The Fragrance of Christmas, and it was sent out by Lynn Willis who is the lead spiritual director for a company called Lead. And it, the full thing goes like this. Manure, urine, sweat, and blood. The first life-giving breath Jesus took. And then the smell of His mother's skin. Jesus meets us where we are. Emmanuel. May you embrace the raw, amazing story of the Incarnation this year, unwrapped, untidy, with all of its dank and sharp and acidic edges. And in thanks and praise and wonder, know that Jesus meets us where we are. Emmanuel. 
You see, some of us are here because we've had a really good year and we want to hear how this baby is going to come into the world and give us all joy and continue the joy that we've had all the year long. And some of us are here because we haven't seen one inkling of joy all year and we want to know that this baby is going to come into the world and show us that things aren't as bad as they always have been and that joy is actually going to come and take a hold. And the answer to that is both of those are true. Life's not going to get any easier. But Jesus has come into the world to be God with you. To meet you where you are. To walk with you through the valleys. To walk with you on the mountains. Because He has promised to come. He has promised to show us to live. He has promised to give us God's love. Because God wanted to come into the world. And God was ready to come and make His love known to us. And in that, He broke into the world and the wonderful incarnation of a baby in a manger. And He entered the world in an unconventional and strange way because God came to show us how much He loved us. So that we could know that He's always with us.